What will it take to make malls in America cool again? TLK9419 said. Just two days ago my friend asked me if I wanted to go to the mall with him, so we got up early, walked 2.5 miles there, and just spent a day walking around the mall, visiting the different shops, and going shopping. It was totally awesome. I felt like a kid from the 80s for a minute even though I wasn't even alive then. Then we left the mall and walked around town before getting some lunch from Culver's. It was so much fun, I wish that was still as common for people to do. Nawareman 136 said. Make them gathering places for activities and events that can't be done online. Small concerts, community theater, escape room, bowling, video game hall, indoor climbing, social clubs, classrooms for independent teachers, etc. I would also love it if there was a place at the mall that would do personalized sizings. Like, I would pay $10 for a guy to tell me the exact dimensions I should look for when I purchase clothes online. A play part 5 said. This is a great answer. Walls used to be a hug for friend groups to hang out at on the weekends. That's what probably made all the business for some stores. I definitely think a community approach would be the best. Make it the place people go to hang out. The way an art festival works. Except it's always going on the weekends with new ideas every week or two. Have some live music, some art exhibits, some street food set up inside. Have some escape rooms and all that. Some places inside just to sit and talk. Make some themed weekends. Stuff like that would work really well and is probably the best way to ever bring back malls. Because a Macy's and some expensive stores just doesn't work out well for the demographics these days. Alt Universe 1 said. You'd have to redo the concept entirely. I picture it as creating a sort of mixed use space in many downtown and suburbia sort of atmosphere that a lot of outdoor malls have been doing. I think you would do that with low-cost condos that use on-site attractions as amenities. You'd have space to create a pool gym area that would be part of a larger sports complex. Indoor fields aren't common in my area, and I think adding more could entice a lot of people. Even better if you have a 24-7 gym and fitness center with a pool. I'd also split up malls and create some green spaces with breezeways for when it rains. With your built-in clientele you could attract a couple corner stores, some retail shops, Restaurants and bars. I'd ditch the old food court and make room for smaller restaurants, focused on trying to get fast casual dining that's found in downtown areas more. You could almost certainly attract the right people with a remodel and new concept of what a mall is. Emu on the loose said. That's a great question. I love malls, grew up with them in the 80s, and I want to see them flourish again. My own ideas include. Transfer ownership from the capital investment companies that own most malls to community nonprofits that take a more local approach. Reposition malls as social gathering places for eating, concerts, festivals, and so forth. Add variety to the stores within malls. If it's all clothing shops, and you don't care about fashion, then you'll not be likely to go to a mall. But if there are lots of different kinds of stores, then more of the public has a reason to visit. Figure out what today's teens think is cool and pander to them a little bit, while also throwing a nod to their millennial parents and their interests. A lot of the burden rests not on malls but on businesses themselves, who, in the age of e-commerce, need to reinvent themselves. I can imagine businesses finding some success by, for example, hosting Twitch viewing parties and selling merch from people's favorite streamers. But I don't know if that would be a viable business model, or just a short-term gimmick. I do think society needs more gathering places for people to come together, and malls are well positioned to provide the space for it. Page 4 LM3R said. I imagine it was a huge boost for the food court, as they would have the MTG nights from 7 to 9 p.m. when most regular mall shoppers were home for dinner watching TV. The MTG crowd was huge and we would always take $10 for food while we were there. I really like some of your proposed ideas. Even further back in the 80s, we had a section of the mall that had food stores from around the world. They were legit stores where you could get supplies that are hard to get for authentic dishes. I would imagine doing something similar now would be a godsend for folks who have really gotten into cooking in the last decade. Chkemp said. Add variety to the stores within malls. If it's all clothing shops, and you don't care about fashion, then you'll not be likely to go to a mall. 
but if there are lots of different kinds of stores, then more of the public has a reason to visit. The sad truth for this is, basically nobody should be shopping at malls for clothes. Clothes in malls are ridiculously, horrifically overpriced. And this is why all of the stores are clothes stores. It's basically just printing money, it's the only thing that can justify the rent cost. It's why all of the fun stores have gone away. When I was a kid they had a WOTC with various card tournaments and a small LAN area in the back. It was great. It got ejected when I was in high school and replaced with a clothes store. Another one. The reason malls are dying is because consumers can't consume at the level malls are designed to funnel products to consumers. They just don't have the resources. Edit. Article says. These days, the most successful malls tend to be dominated by brands that appeal to higher earners, like Nordstrom, Apple and Lululemon, as well as up-incomers like Untucket and Peloton. They also tend to have invested heavily in restaurants, spas and specialty gyms that keep customers coming back, week after week, even if they're doing more of their shopping online, Saunders said. People are being pinched, so they are pinching back. Canada here said. Add variety to the stores within malls. If it's all clothing shops, and you don't care about fashion, then you'll not be likely to go to a mall. But if there are lots of different kinds of stores, then more of the public has a reason to visit. The problem is that for people who are used to buying stuff online there isn't much point in going to other kinds of stores. Personally when I go into brick and mortar stores to buy stuff it's usually because it's cheaper than online, I want it now, and I'd rather not give Amazon business even if it is a competitive price on there. I do go to brick and mortar fairly often personally. But I always know what I'm looking for. The only place I'd go to browse is a clothing store because I want to try stuff on. Buying clothes online is a giant pain in the ass. I think your other ideas are great and focusing on experiences rather than dying retail is a good idea. Emu on the loose said. What is the financial source for purchasing old malls? My little pipe dream of malls becoming locally owned would only be possible with government funding or with strong local fundraising. That's probably the single most difficult step in the entire process. Traditional creditors, like banks, would probably not be likely to loan money for projects like this. Wouldn't that money be better spent on developments that are more sustainable, neighborhood-oriented, and encourage public transportation? Malls already exist, so much of the ecological cost of building them is already water under the bridge. They are, often, more energy efficient than clusters of standalone buildings as they benefit from fewer exterior walls and larger scale HVAC systems. And they are natural transit hubs, which definitely encourages public transit. When I was in college, malls were a favorite bus destination of mine. The neighborhood-oriented criterion is one where malls do fall short, but it's also debatable whether the urban village concept is actually as viable or sustainable or desirable as it claims to be, so I'm not necessarily classifying that as a pro or con. There is a place for large-scale buildings, and perhaps malls are included on that list. Denmason said, Our mall has this. City gave them a grant that helps recoup's lost profit, for X amount of years. Mall has been redeveloped, and sits at probably about 85% occupancy if not a little higher. To the point where an anchor shut down, Sears, and the mall didn't care at all because that location was prime real estate. Sure enough a few months later it was replaced. They also just attracted a new fast casual restaurant that had lines wrapped around the parking lot. They do, or did, concerts in the summer as well. Have an area that's different themes for kids during the year, there's an Easter experience or a Christmas Wonderland or Colonial Times ETC. Dreadcoat said. Yay. They'll never make a profit if their goal is to compete with the likes of Amazon. Malls can probably do a lot of different things depending on the area. My mall slowly got rid of all the fun stuff it had in favor of department stores. We lost a laser tag place and an indoor skate park. Why not bring that stuff back to malls? Nothing is replacing activities like that for people, especially kids. Go-kart courses, mini golf, an arcade, etc. I can only speak for the malls near me but from my understanding it was never that these places didn't make any profit, it was just that Macy's and Sears made way fucking more. Now that they aren't, why can't we get stuff like that again? Tortured Chaos said. 
A compliment I have here is from business owners closing down their shops that were as malls as the rent is too high compared to the foot traffic and sales. As I understand malls often charge rent of a flat fee plus a percentage of sales. Which at first doesn't sound so bad. Sales are down but you pay less rent. But, there is also a minimum rent amount regardless sales. So your rent is high during good and bad sales months. The mall is supposed to get a guaranteed minimum income out of this, which I understand. The owner of the mall probably took out debt to build it or buy it, so they have payments to make. Back when malls actually got large amounts of foot traffic these rents were justified. But now malls are seeing that foot traffic, and stores are pulling out. And the malls really haven't re-evaluated their sales model in the last 20 plus years. So malls really need to re-evaluate how they make money and how their leases are structured. Someone else suggested using the space for more community events or as convention centers. I think those are great ideas. With new leasing models and converting big open stores, like defunct Sears or Herbergers into convention spaces malls could be revitalized. Vendors shit towards things people would want to buy during a convention and everyone makes money. Sebrib said. The focus would have to shift away from selling products and make that a byproduct of the experience. What I mean is malls originally became popular because people love to shop and really love to window shop, so having all these choices of places to shop in one location turned them into a social event. So aside from shopping, people would hang out there. But the original reason they went there was to stop, window or otherwise. They would need to come up with other reasons for people to want to go there besides shopping. Make them social gatherings. I would personally put focus on the courtyards with various attractions. I would start with two long mini golf courses that run the length of the mall. Instead of compacting them in locations like we have now, just put them in a row so you start at one end of the mall and work your way to the other end. Depending on the size of the mall, you could put three of them side by side. Instead of having one large food court, have a few smaller ones. That would encourage people to move around through the mall. Things like that would force people to look at the stores throughout the mall. Hopefully attracting them back once the entertainment is done. Someone sees a store they think looks interesting and they want to go check it out when the game is over. Sebrib said. Sprinkle in other attraction locations like we have now, just enhance them. I would also remove anchor stores and replace them with other entertainment locations. Make one augmented reality, one a bowling alley, one a trampoline park and want a nicer roller rink. You would basically turn them all into an entertainment complex with stores. People would go there for the experience and the entertainment and that high foot traffic would, in theory, drive people into the stores to spend money. Flying Sir Dog said. With the rise of online shopping, malls are basically only for people who prefer not to use the internet, not many left, and people who shop for fun as in they enjoy the experience of going to pick out something nice after comparing things in person. People don't go to buy necessities anymore, so the stores need to appeal to people with money to burn. Make them a combination of shopping and entertainment. Replace the stores that aren't doing well with modern gaming arcades. A whole wing of the existing malls should basically become a Dave and Busters. Keep investing in restaurants as well, but fewer chains and more experimental places. That way mall food isn't just something to fill you up when shopping, but a reason to go there. Also do a better job of mixing in stores, food, and activities, so it feels more like walking around a small city center than a mall. I'm not sure if you want to include saving malls in general or just making the existing ones cool again, but any of these concepts involve having a large customer base with disposable income near the mall. A lot of malls that closed recently line up with economic downturn. Especially and especially in Rust Belt and Southern manufacturing towns. Walls in these areas have to downsize. Procrest One Natrix said. Just like the old brick mill buildings all over New England are being repurchased into very cool living spaces, replace some or most of the shop fronts with condo complexes. They will have great access to easy indoor walking and community, maybe even food courts. It would be a great place for a young person not interested in property maintenance or an older person that doesn't need assisted living but needs indoor walking space. True that few windows would be available, it would be very differently marketed. Carpal Tunnel Snake said. Relevant shit inside. It's gotta be something you can't do online. Huge play places, climbing walls, turn it into an epic retro indoor skate park. 
If it's not an experience, no one will come. They may never come back. The average consumer has nothing to gain from a mall. What I'd personally like to see is them used as an exhibition space. Have conventions with large booths that require store-sized pop-ups. Have those body world exhibits, weird traveling VR trade shows, something thrilling. Vincible said. Dot. Nerve Gears, Sword Art Online, or a sci-fi cosplay sports cafe that features actual working holographic projectors. If I had the money, I'd put one in Bloomington, Emmons Mall of America and whenever a Minnesota Vikings game plays, you'd see the actual athlete's performance is right in the middle of the tables that houses the holographic projectors and such. Basically combining tech you'd find in Star Wars and seeing what everyone in the United States of America seems to love and such. Paper Plane said. A couple malls have started adding stuff that isn't normally in a mall. For instance, I've seen full-size bowling alleys which I thought was pretty neat. Would also be cool to see maybe adding in a paintball field, airsoft field, ropes courses, and such. I've actually seen some of these. Even in the 90s there was a mall I used to frequent that literally had a skate park inside it. Stuff like that is what is going to save these giant useless buildings. People don't really buy stuff at stores, but you can sell them experiences which would save all the infrastructure that is already in place. The food cart could stay the way it is and even be expanded. People will always need to eat. Band said it's not a matter of cool. Their biggest mall in my area which I really enjoyed going to when I read growing up has a bad element there now. There's have been several high profile shootings there in the past several years and it never happened in the 80s and 90s. That's not just old fart talk. It literally just didn't happen here back then. There was some crime. Cars were broken into sometimes and stuff like that. But it wasn't dangerous. And honestly the mask is not in a dangerous part of town. So I'd need them to clean that up and make it safe again. But I also don't want to have to walk through metal detectors to go in. What's the solution? I honestly don't know. So I stay away. It sucks. Bimlauhe83 said the downfall of internet shopping. What made malls cool to begin with was being able to go to one place and get a ton of shopping done. Before masks, you'd have to go to a bunch of different stores and if you weren't in a city, you'd have to go to a bunch of different stores in a bunch of different towns. Amazon and Walmart online are the new mall. Edit to add, we should be rebuild some of these dilapidated buildings that once were malls and use them for shelters, food courts, health depots for the homeless and less fortunate. They could become a place of safety and sobriety for those that need it. The rest should be turned into laser tag, paintball and airsoft arenas. Glittering Fish 9276 said. I loved malls, I think they need to go backwards. Incorporate some kind of outdoor type thing, maybe like a courtyard. I think they need to bring back comfortable areas to just hang out, like classic benches and things. Malls evolved from markets, and I think if they focused more on eco-friendly type stuff, infrastructure, and less need for cars, it'd boom again. Teens used to all have cars and stuff, less and less young people are able to afford cars, gas, insurance, and a trip to the mall. If they could somehow make cars a non-essential for malls it'd be cool to see them rip up the concrete and have a park-like area. It may not make sense from a business perspective focused on the maximum possible profit, but malls don't really fit in with a lot of young people's desires to be humanitarians and environmentalists, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Tossout 672 said. Nothing, they'd have to turn themselves into community centers or parks. Malls are a waste of space, money, resources, and fuck up local ecosystems communities. Malls anti-social design to keep traffic, ACA people, constantly moving by making the entire area physically uncomfortable to stay at for an extended period of time, not even five minutes. Sociable teenagers with no other alternative may have lingered pre-internet age, but nobody actually like malls, maybe a specialty store in one but not the whole thing. Secondly they're extremely lifeless and boring, the only pastime permitted is spending money. If you're poor then you walk around fantasizing about spending money on junk you'd likely throw out within one year. If you aren't spending money then it's grounds to be kicked out the property and are arrested. Social Icoff Zero said. Here in the Seattle area malls and wealthier areas are thriving. I've discussed this with a few people, including some people in Asia, 
and malls in Asia are huge, some of the biggest in the world. Interestingly, and maybe not surprisingly, the malls here in the Seattle area that thrive also have large Asian communities and those malls lean into that population heavily. They have New Year celebrations, they incorporate Asian supermarkets, restaurants, stores, etc. The one I was at recently is installing a karaoke lounge, has at least half a dozen boba shops, a variety of immensely popular Asian chain restaurants. That mall is never dead. It has a live DJ sometimes. Another one has several of those elements, but leans into the Indian American community more. Dolly wall celebrations, etc. It's very high end, very busy, and very popular. Another one up north is a luxury outlet and draws a lot of Chinese people from the Vancouver Richmond area north of the border. Also, super popular. And super busy. My husband make a point to drive up there at least once a year, in non-COVID times anyway. Malls need money to be cool. So malls need people with money. And Asian American communities tend to love to shop and have money to spend. So, that seems to be the recipe here in Seattle. I guess some people don't think that's cool. But I'm here for it. Mred57076 said. Walls were dying out long before this pandemic started. BTW, if you have listened to the news, you would know that vaccinated people can still get COVID too. And they carry the same viral load in their bodies as unvaccinated people. They shed just as many viruses to those around them as unvaccinated people do. The vaccine does help keep you from getting as sick. It greatly reduces the possibility that you will get sick enough to need hospitalized or to die. But, vaccinated people do nothing to stop the spread of COVID. And unvaccinated do not spread it more. That's just facts. Now they are talking about booster shots to be administered about 8 months from being vaccinated. COVID is always going to be around. Like the flu. Better get used to it. We are never going to beat COVID. BTW, that fire you start, I am vaccinated and will get the booster when recommended. To keep me from getting sicker than needed. But I ain't blaming unvaccinated people for COVID. It isn't their fault. It is what it is. Final Beginning 15 said. It won't happen until everything is automated. There's a lapse happening right now. The 50s era boom of America and malls and businesses etc etc hadn't thrived but now we had a dip and as tech advances were finding it more convenient to just stay at home more. This will last longer than just drones becoming the norm for deliveries. It'll last until the whole country is full autonomous which will never happen with this bipartisan BS we have going on. I mean autonomous like most things are being done by machines. We can just walk into stores and get what we need and it auto pays for you. But at that point currency would be almost useless with machines doing most of the work. But in that era, that is when we will see malls flourish and, good, Art expand into architecture with everyone able to live that carefree style life of those in the old days of America. Frigidator said. Make them an experience. As it stands, they're filled with the same companies selling the same merchandise across the nation. They lack character and draw, especially considering that they typically offer nothing that can't be purchased online. If they want to be trendy, they should emulate what's in. Look at downtown business districts for example. Those businesses are typically unique, not as many national chains, varied, retail against restaurant against specialty etc, and typically have either integrated or adjacent residential units. If some of the multi-floor dead anchor spaces, like Sears, were redeveloped as apartments or condos, it could generate a base level of foot traffic for tenant businesses. Going forward, shopping centers could be developed as integrated community focal points. They should have room for community events. Very businesses that serve the needs of the community, throw in a grocer and medical offices if possible, and a residential component. Caleb T. Gordon said, A few things come to mind. Cheap rent and modest earnings can cover. A focus on local business. Experience-based locations that can be visited multiple times. Excellent customer service. Events that can draw people in. The Timals that is live near are constantly seeing businesses moving in and out as they try to cater to local businesses but can't keep rent low enough for those businesses to survive. One mall has been doing well in creating events that draw people in but the pandemic has put those on hold. With a few large stores like Sears Gun they have the real estate to build experience centers like mini golf, VR spaces, arcades, and escape rooms but those haven't been very successful in the past, 
though the ones we did have sucked balls so maybe it was a quality issue. Basically, we need a community center where locals feel comfortable spending time and have reasons to be there. You won't hear me anyway said. I think old school malls failed because they didn't change much clothing stores, toy stores, jewelry then food courts. Why not culture things, every few months, have a different culture theme across the entire mall have authentic stuff be in the mall. I.e., for Latin, Latin made jewelry clothing food have a couple of gathering areas, almost theaters, that will have Latin music, or Latin based presentations maybe have individual stores be for different Latin countries, Mexican themed stores, then Brazil, etc. A few months later, Irish themed few months later, Chinese themed show things from around the world that people don't get to see unless they travel to those countries. That's just one idea. Another idea might be to put more activity-based things into it like bigger trampoline rooms, instead of smaller clothing stores or have handmade clothing stores, from locals nothing that you can get from just anywhere. The main thing is that you can't go with stuff you can get anywhere else to bring people back, it is to provide what can't be provided without an inconvenient amount of effort and our cost instead of people going to those places. Bring it to them bring the experiences and goods to them. Most like Ray said. Put stores in that give you a reason to go. If I go to the MOA, there's only one place that interests me and it's a store that sells gentlemen's hats. I don't want a place that threads eyebrows. I want an arcade. I don't want Forever 21 or whatever it's called. I want a Radio Shack or equivalent. I want a food court with interesting things. I don't want an Applebee's. I want an attached theater, a couple of good bookstores, a few hobby stores, a few kitchen stores. Bring Sears back to life and throw that in. How about a Spencer Gifts? How about a place that only sells knitted cozies for lemurs? Make malls fun. Turn on the fountains. Put on events that aren't craft shows that everyone who hates. Just try a little harder. I used to love the mall when I was a kid. Then it just became Abercrombie and Fitch and Forever 21 side by side alternating across the whole place. Oh good. A place that sells 40 trillion dollar shirts. That's where I wanna go. I hope there's another place close that sells 40 trillion dollar shirts. In the 90s I'd spend a day at the mall. Now, I haven't been to one in years and, even then, only because my wife and kids wanted to go there. Sumichika said. I will probably repeat some people but here goes. Live entertainment. I went to one outdoor mall that had live music and a dance floor. There was a DJ and group of dancers interacting with the audience. It made the place lively. Boba bubble tea spots, especially good ones, the terrible tasting ones won't have good traffic obviously. People treat these spots as hangouts especially in the evening, bonus points for having pretty setups. Arcade. Another mall I've been to has a bowling alley. Karaoke, arcade games, and crane games all in one place. Unique entertainment. Escape rooms or other activities you can't do anywhere else. Lots of people go to the malls to entertain themselves, not just shop. Neon Carnivore said. Specialty stores, stores that carry items that you could only otherwise find online. Customer experience, stores need to be staffed with friendly, reliable people. Not just someone who will say may I help you, but rather someone who will notice you browsing a certain item, and be able to have a conversation about it. I've had many stores that I shopped at regularly just because I like talking to a person that worked there. Reasonable pricing, this goes back to point one, but if the cost of buying in store ends up being higher than price plus shipping online, your store is doomed to fail. I understand operating costs, but if you can't compete with the internet, you shouldn't have opened a store at all. Things to do other than just shop, live performances, gaming tournaments, places for various age groups to hang out. A good food court, especially with a wide selection. I know many malls are trying to do most of these these things, but unless they excel at all of them, they'll fail. Fudig7979 said. There is a modern take on a mall in NorCal called City Center at Bishop Ranch. The layout was designed by an architect and it's really super ergonomic and ingenious to visit. The key is to have one central open air square so that it really is a public space. It really is a square so you can enter from any site and get to your shops at the same time. Not like ugly boxy monstrosities where it's like a 45 minute walk from the Macy's site to the Dillard's site or whatever. 
And even though many parts of the country can't do this as as much, open air is really the future. Or at least in tune with its environment. Big sky less boxes are just too depressing. The only not dying mall in Ohio was Easton and it was open air. People would rather shop in a coat and scarf than go to a soulless box.